Good morning, everyone. I am uh, presenting on behalf of Medicine 2, Lost Loffler, a uh, 21-year-old male from West Bengal who is a student, present with the complaints of fever for two weeks, which is a high-grade fever, intermittent, associated with chills and dry gut. He also had developed a breathlessness, which was initially of NHA grade 1, which is progressed. You can't hear. 21-year-old male. Uh, who from West Bengal, present with a uh, first student, present with the complaints of fever for past two weeks, which is associated with a high grade fever, intermittent in nature, associated with chills and dry gut. He also had developed breathlessness, which was uh, of NHA grade one initially, which progressed to NHA grade four, uh, not associated with orthopenia, paroxysmal, nocturnal dyspnea. Specifically, the uh, breathlessness was predominantly while the patient was sitting. And uh, the patient also had bleeding gums, amaturia, and nose bleeds for one day. Past history wise, uh, he had a past history, known case of modified Bental's procedure for dilated uh, aortic root and ascending uh, aortic aneurysm and severe aortic regurgitation, for which he was on warfarin 6, uh, 6mg alternative, 6mg and 7mg in alternative days. Uh, general examination when he initially was, he was conscious oriented time, place, and person. There was no peripheral signs of infective endocarditis. He had morphinoid habitus and neck pulsations were seen. Uh, on examination, he was tachycardic. Uh, uh, tachycardic, the pulse was uh, regular and there were, uh, all the peripheral pulsations were felt. Uh, BP, uh, BP was within normal limits. He was tachypenic and saturation was maintaining a 99% on room wear. But he was spiking high grade fever with 103 degree Fahrenheit with a normal GCS. Now, on examination, he had uh, pallor was present. Uh, there were no uterus diagnosis, clubbing, uh, or edema. Uh, th there was no elevated JVP. Uh, on ex system examination, uh, examination of the cardiovascular system, the second, <laughs> and the second heart stones were heard. Apexes were present in the fifth uh, intercostal space, medial to the mid clavicular line. Some pro prosthetic click was heard and ejection murmur was heard in the aortic area. Uh, res respiratory system examination, there were no precipitations. Uh, abdomen, there was no abdominal distension, soft, no uh, organomegaly, no features of fluid. An examination of the central nervous system, uh, higher mental functions were normal. Uh, on ex and, and the rest of the cranial nerve examinations were within normal limits. Uh, optic nerve, there was no future suggestion of any loss of flame state hemorrhages. Reflexes were two plus. Uh, Plantar side flexor, there are no neck stiffness. Summarizing history, 21 year old male, known case of uh, post procedure, post Bentas procedure for dilated, uh, iot dilated descent, uh, ascending iota and uh, <coughs> ascending iota and severe aortic regurgitation, present with the complaints of fever for the past two weeks with progressive breathlessness and uh, uh, bleeding gums. And uh, on examination, he is found to, found to be tachycardic, tachypenic. And the uh, uh, rest of the system examinations uh, and the uh, cardiovascular examination had shown a uh, uh, ejection murmur in the aortic area. Uh, so uh, the different what the differentials which can be considered. Uh, I like to put. Uh, I like to uh, log every uh, everyone. I like everyone of you to guys to log in on Slido, and the code number uh, uh, four uh, four one one one. One 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 nine six seven. So So you guys could use this number. Yes. 
so you guys could use this number 3586254 and uh, consider differentials in it I could see most of the people were getting the right answer and the most probable diagnosis here would be an uh, owing to the previous risk factors often prosthetic uh, prosthesis. Uh, Going to the previous risk factors of uh, uh, to the previous risk factors of when he had a prosthesis, the most likely diagnosis here would be a prosthetic valve endocarditis, which is a late onset prosthetic valve endocarditis, and uh, it can be a heart failure, which can be due to prosthetic valve dysfunction. It can be any atypical community acquired pneumonia, uh, and it can be any infections like any rickets, cell, dengue, or malaria. So we, uh, we, when we initially did the initial uh, uh, labs, uh, labs had shown a hemoglobin of 8.4 with a microcytic hypochromic anemia with elevated WBC counts with neutrophilic predominance and, uh, and the PTINR was elevated and the LFT was slightly, uh, LFT was deranged when he initially presented. Serologies wise, it's a serologies were negative. ABG had shown a type 1 respiratory failure with lactic acidosis. So we went ahead with an echo. Echo had shown an echogenic mobile mass attached to the uh, left ventricular outlet, which is of about 17 to 13 millimeters, right? suggestive of an vegetation. And it also had showed the diarrhea root, some features suggestive of an abscess. So we went ahead with an cardiac CT, which had shown future suggestive, which confirmed future suggestive of an vegetation and ruled out an abscess. One and minute. Uh, one minute. So uh, ultrasound abdomen had shown uh, features suggestive of an, we did an ultrasound abdomen to so, uh, show any features, if there are any vascular phenomena involved in it, which was future suggestive of an splenic infarct. So we went ahead with a blood culture. So uh, blood culture <coughs> had shown, three blood cultures were taken and it had shown, it had grown non-toxigenic <coughs> cornibacterium diphtheria for which antibiotic assay was done, which was, which was vancomycin sensitive. So we, uh, our... Uh, our patient satisfied Duke's criteria, major criteria of one and minor criteria of three. So we have di di final diagnosis: <coughs> prosthetic valve endocarditis, late onset caused by cornibacterium diphtheria. So, uh, so I'll put us some slides on prosthetic endo infective endocarditis. Infective endocarditis can be native valve infective endocarditis or prosthetic valve infective endocarditis, in which prosthetic valve endocarditis can be classified into early and late prosthetic valve endocarditis. The early prosthetic valve endocarditis is the if the end uh, if we, if after the insertion of the processes if the uh, endocarditis ha happens within two months it's called as early prosthetic valve endocarditis and it happens if it happens after two months it's called as late prosthetic valve endocarditis the most common organisms associated with an early prosthetic valve endocarditis most commonly because of the nosocomial infections most likely staph coagulase negative cephalococcus, gram negative bacilli and candida. The late, uh, the late uh, prosthetic or endocarditis can be classified into like 2 to 12 months and more than 12 months. 2 to 12 months is a combination of both nosocomial and uh, uh, community occurred, which can be coagulase staph, staphylococcus, streptococcus and enterococcus. And late prosthetic or endocarditis is most commonly due to streptococcus, coagulase negative cephalococcus and enterococcus. And the thing is that uh, uh, Iotic walls are most uh, uh, most likely to get uh, infected with enterococci. However, uh, uh, however, uh, in our in uh, in our patient, uh, 